Good morning. This is Katie Friedman from Unitrend. I'd like to welcome you to our, our live presentation today of our first look recovery series and Unitrend's backup 9.0. Before we begin, I did want to give you a few housekeeping notes. As you may have already noticed, we do have all attendees in listen-only mode. With that in mind, we do welcome your questions throughout today's presentation. However, we do ask that you utilize the Q&A functionality from the WebEx Toolkit, which you will find by selecting the icon with a question mark from the drop-down menu near the middle top of your screen. Please make sure to address all questions to all panelists so that we can answer your questions as quickly as possible. With those details taken care of, I did want to go ahead and introduce our presenter for today. Today we have Joe Noonan, who is the Director of Software Product Management. Joe? Hi, Katie. Thank you. How's my audio sound? Hopefully good. All right. So I see a couple of people saying all right. So. Thanks for the introduction, um, and thanks everybody for joining us today. Obviously, this is a major release for Unitrends, obviously having .o at the end of it, but it also marks some really interesting and, and important features for our product and our company. And we're really excited to, to obviously have this first look with folks prior to, to any general availability to, to help people get ready uh, for what's coming. So really quickly, uh, a lot of folks may be pretty close with Unitrend. Some may just be getting to know us. You know, we want everybody to completely understand what we have to offer and, and how we continue to evolve as a company. Um, so we'll talk about a little bit about our direction first, and then we'll get into 9.0. And, and most importantly, we'll show a pretty quick demo giving you a first look of, of the new release in action. Now, first, 9.0 is a huge part of enabling our customers to, to take their continuity strategy to the next level with Unitrends. And radical simplicity is really exemplified, not just in the functionality, but also in how we deploy and how we scale as well. All that kind of packs into that whole uh, simplicity and user experience. And when we think about cloud empowered, uh, it's often overlooked for Unitrends that we're actually a hybrid cloud solution. Right. Everything that we do really focuses on continuity, not only just locally, but also at secondary sites if you have private cloud, but also third-party clouds and the Unitrans cloud as well. And all-in-one has been something that's been our mantra for quite some time. Right? We're very comprehensive in our overall capabilities and what we can protect and what we can recover, and that kind of helps us tell a, a completely different TCO story than what you might see from some of the other vendors out there in the landscape. Now, a quick overview is just some of the quick offerings and what's going on here. So, obviously, cloud is huge. It's growing. Uh, we're actually protecting more than five petabytes today, and we're worldwide now in the Unitrends cloud. And our offerings range from, you know, basic cloud storage options where we'll give you a copy of your data off-site to providing really, really long-term retention, and in fact, infinite in the way that we actually market it with our forever cloud, where we'll keep extremely long-term retention, you know, more than you would need to. Uh, even for, for most retention needs. And then, of course, if you want to be able to spin up on our cloud, we can offer disaster recovery services for VMware, Hyper-V, as well as physical or virtual windows. And then on top of that DR solution, we have the ability to do what we call application-level automation for recovery assurance. And really what that means is, as a cloud provider, we'll actually send you a report on a monthly basis that says we've tested the machines that you have in our cloud, we know that they're recoverable, and we have an SLA of one hour, and here's a report that says that our test showed that the SLA is much less than one hour. Um, and that's a monthly basis, and that's a report we send out on a monthly basis. And that concept around recovery assurance is really critical, right? Because it's not the big disasters that really hurt you ultimately. It's a lot of little things happen frequently, and they can impact businesses in a big way. And fast recovery is important in all scenarios, but proving that recovery is gonna work properly and in that time frame that's promised is critical for continuity, especially as you start to rely more on third-party vendors like Unitrends or Unitrends partners or other cloud providers. <clears throat> so in terms of the enablers and, and how we get this all done. So first, we actually have um, our, inter our integrated hybrid cloud solutions start, let's say, with our, with our Unitrends Enterprise Backup software. So this is a software-only product. It allows you to leverage your own infrastructure if you have it, and it's highly flexible and customizable as a result. You can scale the way you want. You can deploy how you want. There's four simple paid additions, plus there's a free version up to a terabyte with a lot of great functionality. It is not crippled in any way. 
And we can deploy here as an, <clears throat> excuse me, as an all-in-one virtual appliance for VMware Hyper-V, as well as just basic installable software on Linux. So a lot of flexibility in the way the software can be deployed. Now, it's a very nice growing trend, and we're seeing all sorts of analyst reports that show how the backup appliance market, specifically uh, integrated backup software plus hardware that integrates with cloud and sort of a cloud gateway sort of scenario, is really kind of overtaking the market. And Unitrends has been in this market for quite a while now with the Unitrends Recovery Series. And this really dedicates the compute and the storage plus the software to the vendor. And, and we prepackage that, provide it to customers, and we support it soup to nuts. And it makes it very simple to deploy and manage, and it's really like a different TCO story. So some folks have their own infrastructure that they want to leverage software. Others may want to basically put an all-in-one uh, hyper-converged backup appliance in there and leverage our storage and hardware. Obviously, there are great benefits to both, and we want to let people understand that these are the two ways that we can enable that overall cloud continuity story for, for folks. Now, what's interesting about Unitrend's direction in 9.0 and how it plays a role, so in February of this year, we announced a software unification effort, and we've been delivering on that effort throughout 2015. Now, the reason we had to announce this is because we've actually been growing very well organically as well as inorganically. And a little bit more than a year ago, almost two years ago, we made an acquisition of a company by the name of PhD Virtual. And they had a couple of products, one of which overlapped a good amount with our enterprise backup software, and it was called Unitrans Virtual Backup. But it had great virtualization functionality, not just in the features that people could execute, but also just in the user experience and how it had that virtualization first look and feel to it. And there were a couple of core features that we've been putting into our enterprise backup software, and obviously the same software that runs in the recovery series, over time throughout this year from the virtual backup product to help basically unify the capabilities and take one extremely strong, very simple user experience to market for our customers, simplify the portfolio. And 9.0 is a huge part of this. And while it's a huge step for, for all of our customers and folks looking at Unitrends, uh, it's especially extremely important for those existing UVB customers that are out there today uh, or running the legacy PhD products that are with Unitrends. So a little bit about what's new. There are, <clears throat> excuse me, there are tons of enhancements, but really we can categorize them into three buckets. Uh, first is a major user experience overhaul, and this is backed by our brand new Satori user interface. Satori is obviously an internal code name that we've used there. Now, secondly, we have a, a lot of great functionality that was added to our recovery assurance capabilities. We talked a little bit earlier about that. We'll talk a little bit more later as well. But beyond just virtual environments, we're now able to add recovery assurance for heterogeneous environments for physical windows, as well as uh, machines that are protected at the guest level within a virtual environment. We call that deep virtual. And then lastly, and this is especially important for that uh, legacy PhD and, and Unitrans virtual backup customer base, uh, that particular customer base has, has had a product in the Citrix Zen server space for quite a while, and it was really important that we bring over the core capabilities around hypervisor level protection for Zen server for that customer base. We have thousands of customers. We want to make sure we keep them happy and give them the right path forward with Unitrends. And of course, there's a lot of other folks out there leveraging Citrix Zen server if you are looking for a great solution we're gonna be one of the only ones out there that'll be able to protect it the way that we do. So first, let's start with the user experience. Now, first of all, of course, UX is more than just about the UI, right? It's about the installation experience and, and how fast you can get things done and, and overall the look and feel and, and how you feel when you use a product. But the UI is a big part of it, it's a big enabler. And we want people to love the product when they see it. And we spent two years designing a new user interface to deliver on that. And that's what we've codenamed Satori here. And while radical ease of use is really a company-wide principle here at Unitrends, uh, we actually don't want people to have to use our product constantly. A big part of ease of use is to make this whole concept of continuity a small part of an admin day so they can have time and get that time back so they can focus on their business and other things that are important. Maybe it's not business-related. Maybe it's personal. But ultimately, we're try what we're trying to do here is just simplify your life and get things done quicker. The Satori UI and the overall UX in 9.0 is a core driver to this goal, and we're religiously benchmarking its efficacy against our competition, and we're winning really well, hands over fists. I mean, typically what you see here, and we have the stat of over 50% more efficient, but what ultimately it means is we're, we're looking at time, click counts, and steps to get things done 
comparing against our competitors. And those types of things drive how we implement features in our new user interface. So that does mean that we're heavily scrutinizing what we put in there, and we're very careful about it. And a new user interface, while it's, it's super exciting, we're really excited about it. A lot of our customers that have been using it in beta and early access are really excited about it. It can still be scary, right? It's, it's very different for people to, if you're an existing user of a particular product that has a UX that does certain things, to switch. You have to do it right. You have to think of your existing customers just as much as the ones that you want to win that are out there in the market from your competitors. So this is one of the reasons why we actually took this UI and we put it out in the market back in early May and in the form of Unitrends Free. So this has had about six months of stick time really with that virtualization customer base with Unitrends Free and we've engaged with hundreds of design partners going through rapid prototyping processes where we're providing mock-ups and, and early access uh, user interface uh, capabilities and getting feedback from our existing customers so that as we started building out the more enterprise level features of the product beyond just virtualization, but also physical applications, et cetera, we wanted to make sure that we were engaged with those customers as, along the ri entire ride and getting their feedback and adjusting very quickly to it. But we still understand that, you know, some folks are going to use 9.0 and they'll use the new user interface. And if they come from, from the, you know, the, the legacy user interface that's out there today and they want to still use the legacy UI because that's what they're comfortable with, we didn't take it away from you. It's still there. Now, the new UI actually does come with a brand new REST API. And this allows our partners and our customers, especially our enterprise level customers that want to do more with the product, to extend our capabilities to better meet their more customized needs that they have in the environment. Um, and that's actually pretty important because I did just mention before that we're very strict about how we add new features to the product. And, and this is great that we have this REST API and that there are some features we're just not going to add. And it's not because we don't want to. It's we want to be able to give those features to others, but we don't want to wreck the user experience for the masses. And this is where the REST API provides partners and others to be able to customize, extend, integrate with, you know, other products or portals and things like that in their environment, as well as potentially automate certain tasks. Like, for instance, if you have applications that you want to kick off a backup programmatically after certain things are finished in that application, you can do that with a REST API, obviously. Now, as we talk about the UI, and, and before we get into the demo, I did want to point out, and this is really important, more for existing customers that are here with us today. Those that are new uh, will be, I think, just totally fine with this, but we want to make sure people understand that we've actually taken two terms that were in our existing products, and we simplified them. Uh, the terms weren't bad, but there was some confusion peri periodically on what they could really meant and what they could do. So we've taken the term archive and replication, and we really – uh, just consolidated this to one term called backup copy, and it's highly visible in the UI, and, and people should know about it. Now, the interesting thing here is that not all backup copy targets are going to deliver the same capabilities. What you see on the right-hand side here for hot backup copy targets, there's some optimizations related to this, and that's because we have Unitrend software or hardware with the recovery series at the secondary site. So whether you're, at the Uni you're going to the Unitrend's cloud, where obviously we run Unitrend software, or you have another UEB or recovery series at your own secondary site, or if you're working with a service provider partner of Unitrends that's leveraging our software. Having us at the other side does allow us to obviously add more efficiency in terms of WAN, storage, uh, the ability to spin up quickly, uh, and all that good stuff, and that's kind of why you see that you have a little bit of a better rating on the right-hand side. But that doesn't mean that cold backup copies are bad. Cold backup copy targets are, are great for lower cost abilities to keep, obviously, backups off-site and have that redundancy in your data. And it's really important that you're at least leveraging redundancy in some form. And that's where, obviously, tape or even what we have today with uh, AWS and S3, Amazon S3 and Google and, and other NAS devices, right? We don't have our software running in those areas, so we can't optimize them necessarily, but we can still store backup copies out there. So I'll talk a little bit about recovery assurance now for Windows. And really, this is powered by our Reliable DR um, module. Now, Reliable DR is actually now available as a part of our new Enterprise Plus edition of UEB. So if you haven't seen our new edition-based model that we have for our software licensing, it's all over our website. Go check it out. Um, all the recovery assurance capabilities are built in into our Enterprise Plus edition from now. But Reliable DR 4.2 with um, Unitrends Backup 9.0 
deliver this together in unison here, and now they're sold basically as, as one simple license. So when we think about recovery assurance, I think it is important we step back and just talk about this term a little bit, because not everybody may be completely familiar with it, but really what we're talking about is recovery proof. And this is a simple concept that is insanely difficult to achieve, because you have a lot of folks that are gonna rely on you to make sure that you can recover in time to keep the business going, and you need to be able to show that for, for folks. And it's not just for the IT admin, but also for their management, their stakeholders, the application users. Folks like to understand that a DR strategy that was put in place is actually being exercised and it, it is gonna work. And there's a lot of pressure when you try to think of, of doing that, right? If you try to do all this testing manually, or if you don't trust the level of testing, you're just never gonna really be able to achieve this. And that's a really important part about what we're able to, to bring to the table. And it really heav heavily focuses on just a couple simple but often ignored metrics. So if you look at what we've highlighted here, obviously RPO and RTO, recovery point objective and recovery time objectives. Very, very critical, measured in time based on how much data you're willing to lose as a part of your strategy and how long you're willing to be down. People, these, obviously these are becoming much, much more stringent and shorter uh, over time. Being able to measure the actuals against that is what we can is, is a big part of what we can provide. It's not just that we're able to say, listen, we can recover. Oh, and by the way, if you ever need us to, we can automate that whole process. But we're testing it on a regular basis and we can actually show you that it's within your SLAs. And this is a very simple management style report that really allows admins to take this to the business level and help them understand our continuity solution. And it's hugely important when it comes to leveraging cloud providers. And a big reason for it is, let's face it, recovery confidence is kind of plummeting. And, and the main reasons why, what we've been seeing and what we've been talking with analysts and hearing from them, is that data and business requirements on IT, they're just growing very, very rapidly. But the number of folks in IT are not growing nearly as fast, right? So those economics just don't work very well unless you have improved tools to be able to automate these things and do them for you and make it easier for you. And that's a big part about what we can do here. And as I mentioned before, and I think it's such a critical message, is that this isn't a nice to have, and I think it kind of has been a nice to have for a while. And, and sometimes that's because the, the capabilities out in the marketplace aren't broad enough to really provide you with a full-fledged solution. Um, or folks, you know, maybe don't have capabilities that will really truly give them the, the confidence they believe that the tests are being executed thoroughly enough. But when you think about how much more you're seeing this from other vendors and how I think Unitrends kind of differentiates here. And the fact that third party providers are now becoming a core part of your, your strategies for continuity, gosh, why wouldn't you want proof? I mean, I think if you, especially if you're gonna let somebody else handle that for you, you really want them to be able to show you, hey, listen, I got you covered. And the ways that we think we solve this uh, better than others, obviously, the big point is just to kind of help these folks' minds in a, in a big way personally, but also from a business perspective, right? This isn't something that will save you a few hours of your time. If you're actually running through and doing manual testing to make sure that recovery is gonna work, something like this is gonna save days of your time. And we have customers that can attest to that. And additionally, obviously, you can make the stakeholders of your business much happier by being able to show them that here's this really high-level business report that says our infrastructure and the applications underneath of them are gonna be able to recover and in this amount of time. And of course, if you do ever run into an outage, I hope, I hope you don't, but if you do, uh, this is where obviously you can kind of be a hero and say, hey, well, you know, with just a simple click, I can get the infrastructure portion of my environment up and running and make those apps available very quickly because, gosh, in a major, in a major outage is a lot to do. And fiddling around with the environment and getting things up and running, that's the last thing you want to start troubleshooting problems. That's the last time you want to start tr troubleshooting problems. And the great thing is it's not just about DR, right? Obviously, local backups are where you recover from more than anything else. You know, why wouldn't you want to make sure that locally you're covered and you'll be able to recover those systems. But if you do have a secondary site, that's usually a better place to kind of do a lot of this testing. And if you're leveraging a cloud provider or Unitrends partner that's offering cloud services, uh, hugely important we think to be able to, to take advantage of these capabilities and we have them. And, and you know, this is something that you can obviously ask for and say, listen, you, know, I, you guys are marketing great technology here. I'd, I'd love to hear about it and make sure that I can take advantage of it. So what's brand new here in 9.0 is we've been doing recovery assurance for VMware and Hyper-V for a while. And what we're adding is the ability to do this for agent-based backups for Windows. 
And this covers SQL and Exchange as well. And I think this is a phenomenally important aspect of recovery assurance. And it's a gap that we're finally filling, right? Because one of the best things about Unitrends is we can protect flexibly, whether you're in a virtual environment or you have a mix of physical and virtual, we can do agent-based protection and protect at the guest level or the app level. And that obviously has a lot of benefits in terms of granularity, backup windows, RPOs, all those things. But we can also protect at the hypervisor level, which is, again, also a great and important piece of functionality for simplicity and to be able to protect massive virtual environments really well. Being able to mix these two together has been a gap that we've had in our recovery assurance story up until now, and we're solving that now. And, and we think this is going to be huge for our customers and those that are looking at being able to obviously feel more confident about recovery because now you can protect the way that you want to protect those SQL databases that you're protecting at the database level. You can use that, and then obviously we can now do all the testing and, and, and fail over for those machines, whether they're physical, virtual, plus the VMs that also rely upon them. So it really gives you that full heterogeneous N-tier type of application uh, awareness and testing capability to make sure that it isn't just about spinning up one VM and making sure it works. It's about making sure that the business service is up and running. And that usually means multiple machines. And they could be physical, they could be virtual. And again, this is all available for free with UEB Enterprise Plus. And for recovery series, it can also be added as well. And the Unitrends Cloud, by the way. And how we enable this is basically we're leveraging our Unitrends Bridge technology. So this is something we've announced a long time ago. Unitrends Bridge is basically a one-click P to V, or if you're using an agent to protect a VM, it's a V to V process. But basically it takes that guest level backup and it can spin up a virtual machine quickly out of it. And we automate the entire process within, you know, the recovery series in UED for that whole P to V and V to V process. And then, of course, Reliable DR comes in and integrates with those backups to automate and orchestrate the recovery assurance capabilities for testing as well as failover. And you can recover either to vSphere or Hyper-V. It all happens in a virtual environment, but those source systems can obviously be physical. So the third big bucket here, uh, we have a pretty large customer base for PHC Virtual that are running on Citrix Zen Server that were brought into the Unitrends family uh, a little bit more than a year ago. Really happy to be able to bring this important technology to market for those folks. Nino is going to be critical for them to convert their existing product for UVB or PHD over to our enterprise class backup software. And we have a lot of great options for folks to, to move for free. So. Um, hopefully, you know, you're engaged with sales reps if you are one of our customers using that product and you understand your options. And if you don't, please do reach out. Now, first is an important concept to explain when we think about what we're doing with Zen Server. <clears throat> so prior to 9.0, our existing Zen Server customers and those that were looking to protect Zen Server at the hypervisor level, you kind of have one way to protect, right? If you're not a customer of Unitrans today, you were likely protecting Zen Server with a bunch of agents. And if you were, were a Unitrans customer running our Citrus capabilities on uh, the legacy PhD products, you were protecting at the hypervisor level. And you only had those, those options. There were never, you never had the mix. And the big thing that we're able to offer customers with 9.0 is you now have that flexibility that we've been able to deliver for VMware. And Hyper-V, we now have that for Zen Server and that you can do hypervisor level backups at the, at the VM image layer. You can do guest level and file level, I'm sorry, file level and application level protection within the guest VMs themselves. And then, and this, this last thing you can kind of see on the right is really just for Hyper-V only. And that Hyper-V even, there's some benefits with deep virtualization to be able to protect the physical host that's running the Hyper-V role. Uh, but for Zen server folks, you're really going to get the hypervisor and the guest level capabilities. And overall, with the kind of benefits those bring, the simplicity of VM backups, especially at the agentless level, is great. And the fact that they're application consistent is, is also great. Now, we do want to point out that UEB is going to be our only product that supports the image-based VM hypervisor protection of Citrix Zen Server. And this is really more around just being able to work with the Citrix APIs. You have to live in that environment to really do those backups efficiently. Um, and the recovery series has been able to live in the environment at this point. So we do want to point out that UEB is what's supported not recovery series for hypervisor level backups. But you do get that image-based protection, which is great, but you'll also be able to leverage guest file level protection. And for Send Server, there's actually kind of a special meaning for them versus just, you know, normally, you know, the granularity and to be able to speed up backup windows and leverage change tracking. But 
the the two things, well, I just kind of mentioned one of them. One of the, the big benefits is that compared to VMware and Hyper-V, Citrix M Server actually does not have any change tracking mechanism. And change tracking really just means that from one backup to the next, my hypervisor is only going to give me the changes. And that's going to make those incremental backups really fast. Well, Citrix doesn't have that native capability built in. So being able to leverage an agent at the, at the file level, we have built-in change journaling that will provide that capability and, and significantly increase, I'm sorry, significantly shorten the incremental backup times as a result. So you get faster backups for certain VMs that you want to use an agent that are a little bit more problematic to protect as frequently as you want. And the other great benefit for Zen Server folks is that to do hypervisor backups, obviously you're doing hypervisor snapshots of your virtual disks. And with Citrix, it just so happens that hypervisor snapshots end up taking 3x the amount of storage to do in a lot of cases, which most folks are able to architect and make sure that they're able to do that because they understand snapshots are important. But sometimes they may not be able to snapshot every VM or certain VMs because of just some of those storage requirements within the hypervisor. So leveraging an agent at the guest level is, again, another great way to show flexibility so that you can protect the full environment the way you want. And, of course, that allows you to get in to do more application-level awareness, uh, especially with Exchange and SQL and things like that. And then, of course, Zen Server folks will be able to leverage Unitrends Cloud storage options, which we can write to Unitrends Cloud. We can also go to Amazon as well as Google. And Unitrends uh, DR as a service is extensible to Zen Server customers. This is definitely going to be uh, through the, the guest level or agent protection we have for Windows. Um, we won't have hypervisor level protection spin up, at least not, not, not in the beginning here for Unitrends Cloud, but you would be able to leverage failover into the Unitrends Cloud if you're leveraging that guest capability. All right, so I'm going to break out and go into the demo really quickly. Now, the demo is, is really just going to focus on the Satori user interface. I'm not going to be able to show every feature. Um, we're still in early access mode at this point, and I just want to give people a good overview of really what we're able to, to show here in the new UI, especially if you're an existing customer trying to get used to something new here. We want to give you a, a good quick glimpse into it. So this is our dashboard. And you can see this is a nice HTML5-based user interface. You have tiles. We've kind of gone to this tile approach. You can move these around. You can customize which ones you want to see here. Um, and if you've customized it so much you don't like the dashboard anymore, you can obviously easily reset it. Um, a couple of the things that I actually really like about this is not only do you, do you get this principle of simple, high-level data that you can drill into, because if I want to see the errors in my environment, I can quickly drill in and see which ones have errored out. And same thing with protected and unprotected. Uh, this actually launches one of our built-in reports here for protection summary, which has a lot of really nice, simple visual data on what's been backed up and what assets are protected versus unprotected, but also you can filter a lot of this information um, you know, for instance, if I want to see what is protected, I can quickly filter that, and you can see that everything changed to true, and I can obviously, you know, take these details and customize it quite a bit. And that's available not only for backup, but for our hot targets, recovery, storage has a lot of good information, as well as growth rate information and data reduction for all the different storage that you have out there, whether it's for backup copies or for your backup storage. Um, but one of the really cool things I like about this is we even have our community and daily feed tiles which allow you to obviously leverage the user interface to now interact with Unitrends. So I can basically log into the Unitrends community right from my user interface. I can see an, a dynamic feed that will show me, you know, hot topics that are coming in, and I can click and access these and talk to the folks in the community and learn about best practices and get problems solved and all that right within the UI. Same thing with our daily feed. If you just want to keep up with what we're actually saying and announcing and things like that over Twitter, that's all here, and you can see that as well. I think that's pretty cool, and that kind of goes to that community feel we talked about before, where it's not just about functionality, but it's also the overall experience you get with the company of Unitrends. In our global menu bar, I uh, just want to point out right here in the UI, I can switch to the legacy user interface if I need to. Have something for existing customers to obviously take advantage of if they if they just are not comfortable or there happens to be a feature that is is not completely brought over at this point, because I will be honest, there's there are a couple very small minor features that have not been brought over because either they weren't heavily used um, or we needed to make sure that we get the broad uh, capabilities to market. But having that other UI available for folks just in case they need it is obviously uh, an important piece of the overall experience as well as you're getting used to something new. 
And there's cool things built in like product tours and all that good stuff. And then naturally, you know, we have alerts for updates and failures and issues and things like that. And a lot of this you can basically just drill into directly to see more information and access knowledge base articles and things like that right from the UI again. So the protect page is actually one of my favorite areas of the user interface because it actually acts as a dashboard as well as obviously something that you're gonna do a lot in terms of setting up jobs. So obviously I can set up backup and backup copy here. But notice that if I click on an appliance, I can manage multiple appliances here. And if I click on an appliance, I can see everything that it's protecting. And I can see the last seven days for backups and backup copies. And these are actually dynamic. I can drill in and get more details here about those particular jobs. And the really nice things here is that obviously across the entire inventory, if I want to streamline what I'm showing here, I can search the inventory tab. I can filter what I'm actually showing here. And a really cool filter is I just want to see what failed today. Well, it looks like Tuesday. I actually had two failures. And now I can actually drill into these and I can see the log information to understand what actually failed. So again, the concept here is really about high level simplicity and very quick drill in one or two, maybe three clicks to be able to get things done and understand what happened in the environment. But for general setup backups, if you notice here, two steps and you're not overwhelmed with options. And notice obviously because we're heterogeneous and we can support a lot of things, we have VMware and Hyper-V hypervisor backups. But then we can also protect NAS devices. We can do application level backups for Exchange, Oracle, Sheep, SQL, and SharePoint. And these will filter your inventories based on those particular things that are out there. So if I do a quick filter, let me take a look at my VMware environment. I'll just select the VM really quickly. I can edit just specifically what virtual disks I want to protect. And then my second page and my final page is just a couple of quick options, how I want to protect it. You know, typically people are using incremental forever. That's a great way to protect. Uh, we have a basic schedule here. Most folks are doing dailies. And, and again, we're not overloading you with options here. We have a lot of smart defaults. We have a lot of important things in the background where we'll actually optimize the transport mode for those machines we're backing up. Um, we'll leverage VSS capabilities for application consistency and file level consistency. So we do all that stuff in the background, but it's just literally two steps and you got a backup job set up. Backup copies are pretty much just as simple, right? You're talking about more advanced capabilities around VR. I can get in there and I can basically select machines. It'll take a second here. It's gonna go out and discover the different backup copy targets that are out there in the environment for me to be able to send data to, because it could be multiple. So this could be a cold backup copy target. It could be another appliance at the other side. It could be Unitrends. But here I can actually select which ones those are. A 936 is another appliance we have. eSATA is you know, more like, for lack of a better term, dumb storage, so that you can basically just send uh, you know, simple formatted data out to that particular type of drive so you can rotate it in and out. And I can make my selections here, set my schedules, things like that. Naturally with Recover, a lot of good stuff's gonna happen in the Recover. We're gonna be pulling in all of our backups. And, and what's important is because you can have some pretty sizable environments here, we have really good filtering capabilities based on what we're protecting and the name of that machine, the name of the appliance, obviously the different modes of backups that we support dates and times, all that good stuff to really help you find backups quickly and be able to execute recovery. And of course, we do support VM instant recovery as well as Windows instant recovery, which is an important feature for the recovery assurance that we mentioned. And then of course, if it's backup copies, I can import them back to my source. Uh, I can search for files for file recovery. You know, lots of great capabilities here uh, right within the recover tab. Jobs, again, you know, people, Sometimes I like to spend a lot of time in the jobs manager viewing details to see what's actually being protected by individual jobs. We have a lot of good information here around when things are going to run next and who's going to run them. Um, and you can look at jobs that have run in the past, obviously, as well, under recent jobs. That's actually where your history would be. And again, you can view log information. So um, some nice things there. Really well-organized reports. And I just showed you the protection summary. Love this report, a lot of great information here to show compliance in terms of your overall backup strategy and what's running and what's not running. Um, as well as, probably my favorite report is the storage report, where I can see, and as, remember, if this, is a, if this is a virtual appliance, I can add storage and scale up as I go along. So this could start out small and I can show capacity trending high, and then of course my usage could be trending uh, as well. And I can see those trends, I can see information around growth rates and things like that. 
um, right here from the storage report. And this should be across all storage that happens to be in the environment that we can see. And naturally, when you do an installation, first place you're gonna come here is to the configure page. You'll be able to obviously see your appliances, configure storage, configure backup copy targets, whether they're you know, Unitrends based, like in the Unitrends cloud or another appliance, whether it's UEB or recovery series. And of course, you have your Amazon S3 or Google Clouds, other NAS devices and other storage as well, can all be configured as backup copy targets. And for the optimized and hot backup copy targets, we can do things obviously around configuring your uh, bandwidth throttling and all that good stuff right here. So this is where you're gonna manage your appliances, you add storage, and when you wanna obviously protect something like a vCenter and all the virtual machines under it, or uh, a couple of SQL env um, environments that you need to deploy agents to, you can actually add those here under protected assets. And we have some filtering capabilities for how you wanna look at your environment because we know that some folks, you know, may be virtualization centric, they may have a lot of physical, so you can kind of change those views. Uh, and then you can do things, obviously, we have good credential management um, and, and even with uh, retention and things like that, that's also managed here at the asset level. We have some good retention management that you can do here. So that's it. I just wanted to give an overview of the demo. Um, I know there's more things around Zen Server. Zen Server is just another hypervisor we protect in here, like VMware and Hyper-V. So functionality, pretty much the same in terms of how you would see it. And Recovery Assurance, we're going to release some videos to help show folks how that works as well. So stick with us. Obviously, there'll be more about the release and, and more information coming. And, and you know, we definitely want to make sure that folks are, are able to take advantage. And one thing I'll point out here before I close out my portion and move to the Q&A. So a couple quick calls to action. Beta is available now. You can use that link. Um, we want to make sure that you know folks get their hands on this and, and try it and get a good feel for it. So feel free to try the beta. And uh, you know what? Let me give you a few more seconds here with that particular link so folks can jot it down if they need to. And then of course uh, we do have a, a really cool. So if you're ready to learn more about you know 9.0 and and how it can make your backup and recovery easier. Go to unitrends.com, click on the earn $50 for 15 minutes link, and you can schedule a call with a representative. You'll learn about 9.0 and you walk away, you know, with another 50, 50 bucks for Amazon gift card. All right, so Katie, I think we're ready for the Q&A, and I'm gonna go back to my beta link so folks can see it, but uh, if we wanna fire away. Yeah, we had a ton of questions today, so thanks to everybody who has been asking. Um, these questions, there are so many, I don't know that we're going to get to all of them, but if you do have questions, please put them in. We will try to get to as many as possible. Um, our first question is coming in today, and um, we have Mark asking, I'm looking at your website. I see that the um, Unitrends backup versions um, are only application aware at the enterprise level. Is that accurate, or can you use the standard edition to protect applications like Exchange? So good question. Um, if you're running in a virtual environment, we can still leverage the hypervisor capabilities to be application consistent, even with our Essentials Edition. Um, so basically that'll, actually even with our free version, <laughs> I, should, I should make sure I clarify that. And that's obviously because using VSS through the, the guest tools of the hypervisor, we can make sure that things are flushed and consistency is there. What you get with Enterprise Edition is that granular application level protection for Exchange, SQL, SharePoint, and Oracle. So that's database level protection, obviously leveraged for that granularity to reduce backup windows, RPOs, and things like that. Typically, if you have highly transactional or big databases, it's really important to leverage those types of capabilities, and that's what you get out of the value of Enterprise Edition. But don't feel like you can't protect applications uh, in a virtual environment, obviously with the lower edition. I do want to point out, though, if you do have SQL or Exchange on a physical machine, um, we can protect them at the file level in the lower cost editions, but most folks typically will want to leverage the enterprise capabilities for, for SQL and Exchange running on a physical machine because you don't have that full image-based uh, protection that you get from a hypervisor. It's a little bit different being there. So uh, most folks running physical machines with those apps will use Enterprise Edition. All right, um, next question is, um, we are on the Recovery 943. Looks like much of the additional recovery assurance requires additional licensing, or am I misunderstanding this? 
So at this point, the recovery assurance is, is still an add-on for the recovery series. Um, that's something that we're considering in the future around changing. Obviously, we made some really good enhancements to the packaging for uh, the UEB software to include that in Enterprise Plus, but it is an add-on charge with uh, recovery series. All right. Um, coming in from Chris, Chris says, I understand that there are changes to dedupe in this release. Can you review? So we actually changed deduplication last release in 8.2. Uh, we went from what we currently use today, I'm sorry, what we currently use prior in post-process deduplication where we, we really kind of optimize the speed with which we're bringing backups in and footprint is secondary, right? We will do deduplication later on a schedule and some data will always remain hydrated. Well, we've actually in 8.2 moved to an inline deduplication method. Now we still support both post-process and inline dedupe and actually, what's cool is that our product's smart enough to understand what types of data inline do pretty well versus which ones don't. So we'll actually optimize which type of dedupe we use, but most data, most modern data is actually gonna be inline deduplicated now and the storage footprint savings are, are massively huge. But for us to go do that, we obviously had to do some pretty core uh, changes in, in some functionality and we added something called dedupe acceleration, which really helps with the performance benefits that you would need when you start adding that additional processing for inline dedupe. So 8.2 added great, great capabilities around, you know, deduplication and folks that are leveraging that, uh, especially on fresh appliances, because some of those capabilities are only available in fresh appliances, um, you know, pretty amazing benefits. All right. Um, we have a, a question coming in from Tony, and Tony says, um, can you can you swap back and forth between the legacy uh, UI and the new UI on the same appliance? In other words, can I try the new way but still use the old way until I get all of my DR documents updated? So the answer is yes. Um, I, I don't encourage switching back and forth frequently. Uh, we do expect that people are gonna do a little bit of it, obviously, because they might need to do some setting up of things in, in the Satori UI or they wanna just check it out for a little while and then they need to come back. Um, so I don't think it's a great strategy to go and switch back and forth. Um, we're doing our best to make sure that we test, obviously, how the two work together. Um, but, uh, but naturally, the ability to fall back to the legacy UI is absolutely there just in case you do need it. All right. Um, we have a question coming in from Kim. Kim says, I was told that this version would include the ability to back up grandfather, father, son. Can this be done? So not in 9.0, and that is something that we expect to have uh, in a follow-on release. But today, uh, GFS retention is not in 9.0. Okay. Question coming in from Michael. Now, um, Katie, just, just to point out, the, for folks that are looking to leverage long-term retention, we do actually have the Forever Cloud, which manages retention for folks. And, of course, um, you know, our backup copy processes and the way that you schedule things can obviously handle long-term retention. So it's not that we can't solve long-term retention needs. We do that very well. But that nice, uh, simple GFS retention policy that you just set with a couple of numbers, uh, that's what we're going to be adding later. Okay. Question from Michael, do you need to deploy another appliance for replication? If you want to do optimized or hot backup copies, uh, you'll deploy another instance of the software at that target site. That's how we'll obviously be able to handle things like bandwidth throttling, um, WAN acceleration, WAN efficiencies, um, forever incremental, all the, the deduplication that we do to really reduce the amount of WAN traffic and things like that. So, yes, you deploy another piece of our software, whether it's a physical appliance, a virtual appliance, or just the installable, all three will work, but you do need our software at the other side for that. If you don't want to leverage our software, you can still use our other supported um, backup copy targets that we don't need to deploy anything on, and that's like Amazon, Google, uh, NAS devices, other SANS, uh, rotational media tape, things like that. Um, question from Corey. Corey says, is licensing structure remaining the same? Specifically, uh, UAV is licensed per socket for VMware and Hyper-V. Will that be the same for the new Unitrans backup? Yes. So we, we license per socket for VMware, Hyper-V, as well as KVM, Citrix, uh, and other folks, other hypervisors as well. What we've really done in our licensing strategy that was just launched in September was make it pretty darn simple. If, if you were licensing a hypervisor, it's a per socket license. It doesn't matter whether you're leveraging aging capabilities or whether you're leveraging hypervisor-based capabilities. Those are features of the different additions, 
but a stock that covers those uh, the hypervisors. All right. Um, question from Tony. Will all of these new features be available on our older appliances? So the Satori user interface is the only feature that has a caveat, and that is uh, going to be available on CentOS 6 appliances only. Um, so we are working, by the way, that's only at release for 9.0. Uh, we're, we're getting a migration path up for, from CentOS 5 to CentOS 6 to be able to help folks be able to leverage the Satori UI on the older appliances as well. So they will be, uh, but at initial release for 9.0, it'll be CentOS 6. Okay. Francis is asking, is Unitrim's application aware, for example, Active Directory, Exchange, et cetera? Absolutely. So for application awareness that you get through VSS, we, we obviously can provide that. And then for the specific applications that we have app level protection for, there's additional capabilities built in there really around protection and some awareness. So um, we can get as aware as you need when it comes to SQL, Exchange, Oracle, SharePoint, things like that. And then another question from Francis, do you utilize the VMware API for virtualization backup? Absolutely. Um, and it's an option because uh, we have folks that typically, if you have environments, especially uh, environments with some VMs that are really big and some VMs that are really critical, people will use hypervisor level protection for the vast majority of the environment. And then for certain VMs where they need better RPOs or shorter backup windows or they want to reduce the amount of storage they're using, they may actually throw an agent out there on some of them. But that's the beauty of the new socket licensing is that you have the ability to leverage all those capabilities based on the addition that you purchase. And also just want to point out that that means that those of you who have VMware ESXi who don't have VMware Essentials can use the agent to protect those clients as well. So um, yep. another great Thanks, benefit there. Um, question coming in from Tony. Maybe I missed it, but is the recovery assurance included in every install or is it an additional purchase? So just to clarify there, it's, it, with UEB uh, Enterprise Plus, it is included, and with the recovery series, because we don't have additions with recovery series, we kind of give you the vast majority of functionality in every box. Um, recovery assurance is an add-on for recovery series. All right. From Branu, can we replicate data to different locations but not back up? Uh, I'm sorry, could you repeat that one, Katie? Can we replicate data, not backups, to different locations? We replicate backup data and, and backup data only. So if you have machines and you're looking to, you know, more or less kind of create sort of a, a CDP process right from the source machine to the target machine and have cold standbys and that sort of scenario, that, that's not a DR option we offer. Um, we do backups, give you off-site backups and then obviously instant recovery capabilities for Windows, Hyper-V, and VMware at the secondary sites obviously spin up quickly. All right, question from Sean. Any chance of application aware support coming into Unitrend's free edition someday, specifically Exchange? And, and I'll again just go back to, I'm assuming this just means the guest level, I'm sorry, the application level protection uh, of Exchange. So you want to be able to do EDB backups and, you know, obviously handle the transaction logs and all that good stuff um, in Unitrend's free, and it's possible. Um, we're actually, you know, Unitrends Free is a community-driven type of product. We have a great community forum out there. We'd love to hear people kind of drive more functionality in there and, and let us know their needs. We're, we're really not trying to cripple Unitrends Free whatsoever in terms of features. Um, we give one terabyte, and, and even in certain offerings we have out there on our website, a, a terabyte and a half available for free. Uh, the reason that you don't see everything in there is really just about simplicity. Right? We, we just want to be careful about overloading uh, that particular market with too many features, but let us know about it on the community and, and we'll see if we put it in. All right, question from Arsalan. So to clarify, there is or capability to recover one specific file and avoid having to restore a whole day of backup. Absolutely. Uh, file recovery can be done both at the hypervisor level, if we're doing backups through the, through the APIs of the hypervisor, as well as if we're using agents. So file capabilities are great there. And obviously being able to recover granularly is really important for RTOs. And then a question from Felix. Do you need an agent installed per VM or per host? So we don't technically need agents installed at all for VMware or for Citrix. 
Um, for Hyper-V, we actually will put uh, a small agent on each host, and that'll handle things like change tracking and, and all that good stuff, but you don't have to actually put agents on the VMs. Um, if you want to leverage the functionality of guest protection to be able to get really granular and just protect files, just protect applications, then you can put an agent on specific VMs that you want to. But it is important that everybody understands here that you don't have to put agents on VMs. There's just extra capabilities you can get from that if you choose for certain VMs. Travis says, I'm getting a 602 in a few weeks. Will it have this new user interface or will I have to upgrade to it later? Uh, it depends when you get it. So I, I can't say, but uh, it, 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 you'll be teetering on the, on the line there where you, you might get the new UI, you may have to upgrade. But the good thing is, is that even though this is a .o release, it's still an in-place upgrade for those, uh, for those appliances. And that's true for, even for the Sense OS 5 folks that I mentioned before. I know there's that caveat, and I know that's not an awesome thing, but um, obviously you can still leverage 9.0, the latest bug fixes and things like that. It's always good to make sure you're up to date on the latest release. Uh, you just wouldn't be able to use that Satori UI, but for people buying, uh, you know, a newer appliances, that'll obviously have CentOS 6, you know, no problem. All right, from Ben, are you guys also revamping the email notifications to match the new user interface, or will the emails have the same look? Um, good granular question. Um, I, I don't mind working with you offline to actually show you what we've done. There have been enhancements. There are more that we have planned post 9.0, because obviously we're doing more agile development, and obviously we'll be rolling out some, some visual enhancements a little bit more uh, just after the, the initial release. But we did have to cut, uh, obviously, the, the put code freeze in, pla code freeze in place uh, relatively recently. So uh, there are enhancements, uh, but uh, it's, it's not where we're, we're going to be done. So, you know, happy to work with you offline and show you what we got. And, and obviously, we're going to just try the beta and, and, of course, let us know. If we if we put enough enhancement in. <laughs> All right, from Branu, does UAB support Microsoft Exchange DAG? Uh, yes, it does. Okay, um, just a comment from Christopher. I like that there's not two places to set backups and schedules anymore. He's very excited about that. Good. <laughs> um, from Tony, when. Uh, when I update, will all my jobs be brought over, or will everything have to be set up again? So when you do an upgrade, I believe you will probably have to reset up some of these jobs. But obviously, we did do integration so that the legacy UI did obviously leverage some of the same underlying APIs so that it could show in a new UI. Um, that's actually a really good question. Um, let me, I actually would like to get back to you and just confirm that. I think they're probably just because the job setup is, is kind of different that you may have to set up jobs again. And you may want to, honestly, because it's, it's simplified and it's different, but you know, some folks may not want to have to go through that extra effort. So um, let's reach out offline and we'll talk and we'll make sure that we, we get it documented if we have a migration tool in place. All right, from Carl, how many days of backups can be kept? Uh, it depends on how much storage you have. Uh, and obviously, if you want to leverage your deduplicated backup storage or if you're leveraging backup copies, um, in a different location, um, you know, that may not be deduplicated if you're using cold backup copies. So that's a loaded question that requires a lot of other analysis to see how much data you'd be able to keep. Uh, naturally, okay. again, a lot of folks are, are leveraging short-term retention locally, and then they'll leverage, you know, something like Unitrends Cloud or, or one of our partners to handle long-term retention off-site so that they don't actually have to worry about that burden of trying to handle lots of data on-site themselves. So those are options for you. This is a great question from Christopher. Will 9.0 be backwards compatible with pre-9.0 and older archived D2D drives? So I think the question is getting at, you know, are backups that you have somehow compromised if you move up? And the answer is no. Obviously, we'll be able to work with older backups. All right. From Stan, um, I didn't know that you handle cloud as well as backup. Okay, I think that's a little bit more of a statement here. <laughs> um, and then from Christopher, um, currently reports are not kept for any length of time. This has become cumbersome in regards to audits, needing to use the alerts that have been sent to the help desk email. Does 9.0 allow for historical reporting on backups, archives, failures, et cetera? Absolutely. Um, when I was doing a demo, 
one of the first things that you'll see on most of the reports is a time frame that you'll actually set where you want to run those reports. So obviously anything that's in our database is still going to be there available for reporting. And if you want to actually audit things, you can, you can export that out in the PDF and, and even CSV and store that if you need to. But yes, you can definitely go back in time and, and run reports on anything that's still out there. All right, from Larry, is Azure support or Azure storage supported? Azure is, is not. Um, AWS S3, as well as Google. Uh, I believe we also support Rackspace cloud files and, uh, and other S3 types of compatible storage vendors. But right now we're, we're just with S3, not, uh, not Azure. All right, from Daniel, is it easy to start with Unitrans 3 and later migrate to Unitrans 9.0? It's pretty simple to do that. Um, basically, so yes, uh, the answer is yes. You can you can give it a shot with Unitrans Free if you want. Uh, bear in mind, obviously, UEB 9.0, even in the beta, um, we have built-in trial periods. So if you just want to get started with something and you think you might make a decision within 30 days or so, then absolutely, you know, go with the trial. But if you think that you're going to need many months of time and you really want to, you know, kick the tires for a while and you're not sure when you'll be ready to actually purchase licensing, then start with free, and, and it's an upgrade from there. All right, from Alan, great to see that you're getting into Gen Server. Any plans for other KVM hypervisors like uh, Nutanix Acropolis? So at the hypervisor level, uh, we haven't committed to any additional hypervisors, although we do constantly watch those markets, especially with KVM. We did, and obviously we, we can protect KVM at the agent level, at the guest level within the VMs. And we do cover that with socket licensing to make that obviously, you know, much more affordable for folks to be able to leverage those capabilities. We don't make you pay per VM just because you're using agents. So those are some of the benefits we've done around KVM that we can protect it and we can do it cost effectively. But at the hypervisor level, um, we haven't committed to, to doing the work yet. All right. Um, so many questions. <laughs> hey, let's, let's, let's keep see. going then. I know, there's so many, it's just amazing. Um, should this be going live on the recovery series around mid next month? It, it'll, it'll be going live in, in a relatively recent time frame. I don't want to give dates only because um, we roll things out in over a process. If people, existing customers need upgrades, they can always get them. Uh, but we'll leverage our user interface alerts and things like that uh, over a period of time so that we're, we're rolling in and staging the rollout, so we're not overburdening support and things like that as we do these things. And naturally, it'll be on the website for, for anybody to download uh, as soon as we GA. So the reason I don't give you a date is because for different people, you might see these alerts at different times. But it's it's pretty imminent, and uh, and and we're you know at the later stages of beta now. But that doesn't actually shouldn't dissuade anyone from going and trying beta right now again because it is a, an in-place upgrade from beta, and you can upgrade your existing appliances to beta if you want. All right. Um, are there any gotchas with the upgrade? The only gotcha is the one I had to be honest about on the uh, CentOS 5 restriction. And that's, again, a temporary restriction, uh, not something that will be long-term, just something that we have to figure out, and we didn't want to hold the release to, to figure it out. From which, will we be able to add an existing NAS device to backup storage available to Unitrends 9.0? Actually, Noah, Katie, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm open. So with the, the gotchas, it's a, it's a really good question. So our release notes are always a great place to understand any gotchas because something may be a gotcha in there that I wasn't thinking was a gotcha. Um, but every single feature of the older UI, if you're an existing customer, was not brought in to the newer UI. And, and that was on purpose, right? We don't want to, to take functionality away from people, but simplicity was an important principle that we were going after. The uh, release notes that are available at this link for beta will document any feature that you could leverage in the older UI, and it'll tell you whether it's in the new, it, whether it's not in the new UI, whether it's CLI based, or whether it's something we're adding later on, or whether you would have to switch to the legacy UI to leverage it. Um, so, in, if, if you're asking about gotchas, I would just say it's best to re to read the release notes. Okay. Um, let me ask that question again that, um, that this one is from Rich. Will we be able to add an existing NAS device to backup storage available to Unitrans 9.0? Uh, 
If you're using um, UEB 8.1 or later, we did add the stateless capability that will allow you to basically throw away your old appliance and attach a new one to existing backups to be able to use it. So you, got to, you had to be running 8.1 or later, I believe, to take advantage of that. And if you are, the answer is yes. Um, I see that you support, this is coming from Aaron, I see that you support replication to Amazon Web Services. Can you restore VMs in AWS from the replicated sources in AWS? Not in this product yet, um, but we do have a product in our portfolio by the name of Boomerang. Uh, the website is vmboomerang.com, and it'll actually handle replication as well as spin up to S3 storage, which is obviously, you know, lower cost storage and doesn't require a lot of compute and naturally it can handle the spin-up into EC2. So it's a pretty cool product. Um, good technology that's in the Unitrends portfolio, hint, hint, that's important, but um, it, is, uh, it is not available in this product right now. And then I think this is similar to a question we had earlier, but just um, it's just come in, so I want to make sure that this has been clarified from Steve. Can I upgrade my free edition UEB to 9.0 beta and retain all set? Uh, I believe the answer is yes. You just basically go and uh, there's two ways you can do it. I believe you can either point to our, our beta repo, which we have the instructions in the release notes. Um, also, you know, you can throw the VM away and use our stateless capabilities and bring in a new beta UEB and still use all your backups because the stateless features in, in Unitrans free. All right. Um... Uh, there's a couple that have been asked um, by a few different people. Um, when will Unitrans be able to see a progress bar and how much percentage of backup has been completed? And uh, it, it broke up a little bit there, Katie. Uh, could you just repeat that one, please? Yes. When will Unitrans be able to see a progress bar and how much of a backup percentage has been completed? So, you know what, let me, I don't think I have any jobs running at the moment, but under active jobs, we have progress bars that show you exactly what's going on. And naturally under the jobs section, uh, we also have information around jobs that are running. I'll let the recent jobs fresh here. And you can see progress bars of anything that's active. All right. Um... Question from Kim, how will archive feature change in 9.0 as far as retention goes in creating multiple jobs and keeping them monthly or yearly? Katie, I apologize, man. I have a weird phone issue, so I, I need you to repeat that one, please. That's right. That's right. How will the archive feature change in 9.0 as far as retention goes in creating multiple jobs and keeping them monthly or yearly? Um, Good question. So backup copy jobs in general have obviously been simplified. Uh, I kind of walked through a couple of those steps. Um, the scheduling and things like that is, is obviously simplified as well. I, my best answer for that one, honestly, is, is try out the beta because it depends on what you're really trying to get to as to whether it's changed for you. It might feel exactly the same and you might do the exact same thing, but leveraging some of the new capabilities and the way that jobs are managed, you might find that you want to do something a little bit differently. But really, ultimately, with, with what we were calling archives before, and we're now calling cold backup copies, um, again, you're, you're running those copies on a schedule to send to other storage that's not going to be doing any, you know, deduplication processing or anything like that. Um, it's just going to put it out there in a, in a good, healthy format that you can access at another time and import in. So that schedule is, is how you handle the retention. All right, this question is coming in from James. When will 9.0 be an automatic upgrade on the CentOS version appliances, or will this need to be scheduled with support? On the, are we talking about the older CentOS 5 versions? CentOS 6. CentOS, CentOS 6. 6. So it's not defined yet as to what the exact whitelist process is, but if you ever need 9.0 and you wanna, you wanna basically get access to it, yeah, contact support. Um, that's that's a, that's a good way to, to get, obviously, access to it. Um, but naturally, you'll also receive alerts in your user interface as we roll it out through our, our process, and you'll be able to just, you know, click the alert and get the upgrade then. 
All right. that, that's usually usually the recommended method, but if somebody really needs it and they haven't gotten that alert, it, it's okay to, to contact us. And again, this is where I would actually push people, you know, even to beta right now, um, beta at unitrends.com is a great email address to interact with Unitrends during this process prior to release. So if you have any questions that we don't answer here or you want to stay up to date on some of the things like, hey, when's GA and all that kind of stuff, I would get in the beta program and, and email beta at unitrends.com, and, and that, that's going to be a great way to interact with us. All right. Um, let's see. Um, in the new Satori interface, will I be able to print out backup schedules and include exclude list? Can you print out backup schedules? Actually, I believe you can print out, obviously, the, the web pages. I don't know if we have an export feature of the backup schedules uh, specifically. And, and what was the second part of that question? Um, and include an exclude list. Okay. Um, so I, I think you're looking for more of a, you know, I want to I report on how I'm protecting my systems. Um, that's a great area for uh, the CLI and the API that we have, and, and I do believe we have those capabilities you can pull out through those functions. And for the Satori UI, we did a little bit in the legacy CLI around pulling this kind of report. I don't think we ever had it in the user interface, but, um, you know, we'll take the feature suggestion here and, and try to figure out a way that we can work that into the UI as well. But for today, I would say that uh, the API is probably going to be the best way to pull out that kind of custom report. All right. And um, I think we're going to have this be our last question because I didn't realize that we are six minutes over our um, <laughs> our time today. So um, one more question and then we will um, let everybody get back to their regular schedule. This question is coming from Steve. Steve says, can both hot and cold backup jobs be set up? Katie, not sure what's going on here, but unfortunately I need to repeat that again. <laughs> Good thing this is the last one since I've had to do that a couple of times. Can both hot and cold backup jobs be set up? Yes. Yes, you can. Great. All right. Well, that is going to be our last question for the day. We want to thank everybody for your time and questions today and all of your interest in the new Unitrends 9.0. We look forward to following up with each and every one of you here over the next few days to answer any questions that we were not able to get to um, during our live session. And hope you have a great afternoon. Thank